Yellow bonus, what do you want? What do you want? Yellow bonus, what do you want? 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 All right, everybody. I am now you're blurry great. again. <laughs> Sorry, I have blurry. brought my light skinned friends to the table <laughs> <laughs> to talk about what is going on right now in, in pop culture. So, uh, y'all, as y'all know, this is the living room. Like I said, I'm Sid the Great here with my co host, Aisha Damali. We have our special <laughs> guest here who has been our one and only guest who has returned because she has had plenty of things to say and she has held her tongue and has given us the exclusive on her thoughts right here on the living room 4440 yeah this i would also cool. like to interject and say that the people have said i posted on my story i'm like oh when sydney sees it because i thought you were asleep Sid, when i saw the apology because i saw it at like i feel like 2 a.m when i saw it i was like mm. clutches pearls and people were like I was like, I cannot wait to see what Sid has to say. And people were like, yeah, Sydney's about to rip her a new one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then one of our other mutual friends was like, I can't wait to see what Kalia has to say. And I was like, you know what? Bring her on down. Come on down, Kalia. <laughs> it was Come the get the seat. <laughs> it was the perfect time to have you back on the show once again. Correct. Yeah, really happy to have you here. It's quite tragic. But you know, Sydney, I also want to preface that you don't have to say anything. Like if you want to <laughs> add your piece, feel mm -hmm. free. But also this is not your labor to do. This is for Aisha and I to call in our fellow light-skinned clowns. <laughs> so that we can really just stop trying Whoa, to- Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know her. I don't know her. <laughs> but look, she, you know, she, we have to take responsibility for the foolishness because Girls really be walking around in 2021 acting like they don't know that being light skinned has privileges when you're in the black community. And it's oh, time but to do start. white people know that they have privilege? Ugh. Right. It's it's a lot. The question is, do so, they know? Let's, yes. let's get into it. We are meeting today to talk about Danny Lay and her mm -hmm. buffoonery. Um, and I don't know where you guys want to start. If you want to start with the action or if you want to start with the, uh, how she followed up the action. Oh, I can what, sing the what, song. What I guess makes, yeah, well, I mean, we already played it, but. Yellow bonus, what do you want? What do you want? Yellow bonus, what do you want? What do you want? What makes, what made you respond? Was it her response to her backlash or was it the song itself? What made you clutch your pearls? Either one of you. I know for me, I didn't hear much about the song because I didn't know who this girl was until like yeah. yesterday. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. didn't like yeah, this wasn't on my radar until I saw the apology. And it, you both right. know I hate a raggedy apology. So for <laughs> and so does Sydney. So y'all are um on the same page. Sydney does not like him and she has had to break as, and the light skin holds it there. She done had to break them down before. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. that's what got me. I don't know. Maybe we want to start before the apology, so but that's where where I come into the fold. Okay, Sydney, what about you? Uh, yeah, I I knew who she was. I think she has a song with Chris Brown that I didn't listen to, and I didn't bring it up to be shady, but I just knew she had a song <laughs> with Chris Brown, and um, at least I think that's her. But it was I saw the I saw it on Kalia's story, and I was like, oh, uh oh, somebody done did some things. Let me go see. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, as you already mentioned, I do hate a raggedy apology. Um, but I guess oh. for me. What brought me to, uh, I guess, wanting to have this conversation was just, again, just colorism. Like I'm, like Kalia said, I understand it's not my work. I also agree with her 100%. I think it is the, the, it is the privileged, those who are privileged at that moment, it's their responsibility to do something about whatever the situation is, the issue is. But I can't not speak up when I see colorism. Like I have to be like, I have tried to tell y'all. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So that for me, it was the colorism in and of itself. Uh, read the room also kind of like, I saw somebody comment like, girl, we are in the midst of a revolution. And here you come with some, oh, I don't know colorism is, I don't see color and privilege. And some people, that's, and I felt the same way. Like, yeah, it's, I would like for when this quarantine is over, because I really feel like we could change the world today. We could all decide right now, we're no longer going to stand for this thing. But, and, but we act like it takes so much time to have a change for something. And if we don't change it now, it's kind of like a, if not you, then who kind of thing. 
So it was it's a multi it's a it's a multiple reasons why I was brought here, but definitely colorism and just wanted it to be a change so that people's kids don't gotta keep having this conversation. What about mm. you, Queen? Oh, um, I think mine started with the raggedy, god awful song. Um, you know, in my brain, I was like, was this what they rolled out to to the Capitol? This shit is god awful. It's the worst thing. <laughs> it's it sounds so bad. It like sounds it's literally, birdish. it literally sounds awful. And I think that if it if this song sounded good, people would honestly be reacting differently. Oh yeah. Um, because people can make excuses for things that they like, Absolutely. and that keeps us from having a lot of conversations that we need to have as far as um a lot of things colorism men and their predatory behavior and rapey behavior and just misogyny in general like we allow a lot of things to slide because we think something rock and it sound good or whatever so i'm honestly glad that her song is trash so that we can have this open dialogue and have the conversation about colorism and maybe we can get into the fact that this ain't her lane no way but anyway um yeah i'm here to have the conversation but i think it first struck me because i was like this song is gosh awful and then because it sounded so bad i like could hear what was being said yeah it is it sounds birdish i don't know if i i want to say it again it sounds when i sing it i'll be like this sounds like a bird like that video of uh, beyonce in that little costume we don't talk about <laughs> that's what it's, it's giving music. it's giving call call yeah absolutely, absolutely. Come on, Sip T. Sip Shay, throw Shay, Sip T. <laughs> okay, wow. So where do we want to begin? It is. We already talked about this in our DMs. It is a very layered conversation. Um, we talked about the song being god awful. Um, mm -hmm. Y'all heard it. We played it. So we know exactly what it is we're talking about. So should we just go straight to the apology and why it was terrible? Should we well, break I it down? Like I want to level set. Like I feel like the word of this entire experience is like intersectionality, people. Mm -hmm intersectionality right mm -hmm. because it's this like in her her raggedy apology you know she gets <laughs> into the fact that obviously she's not racist or obviously she's not colorist yeah. uh, because she has an identity of like a person of color not gonna we're not gonna jump into what exactly she would be defined as yet but it, I think it's like, we always assume that because we're black or because we're, we're brown, that we can't also have advantages. So mm -hmm. when stuff like this happens, you got people, light skin and dark skin, like Charlemagne saying, well, I don't understand the problem because brown skin gets girls is a song. So why can't we have a song for light skin girls without talking about the historical context as to why we don't need a song about light skin girls. He, yes. he is a um, like a consistent character of devil's advocate. So one might even argue the devil himself, <laughs> but it's like, it's like, I know that he says and does so many things for the attention of it or to get the perspective of it or to get people to elaborate, maybe so other people can understand it. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's why he acts as birdie as he does, but Very yeah, nice. <laughs> um, to take from what you said, because there's a brown skin girl song. First of all, don't ever put this bird's name in the same sentence as Beyonce because I'll rip your fucking souls out. Don't fucking try it. But celebrating brown skin and dark skin girls specifically is who Beyonce made the song for. And trying to compare it to that gosh awful, no, I want it, what do you want? Like, no, girl, we're not, mm -mm, it's not it. It's giving, it's giving uh, tone deaf, it's giving missing the point. Right. Yes, absolutely. But I think intersectionality is very important because you will have people who are like, as far as shades within our community on the privileged side of things saying, I feel as if in acknowledging that privilege that you are denying my experience as a black person, those things that are and have been harmful to me because I am black. And like mm -hmm. you just said, if we can acknowledge the different parts that privilege us in different parts that disadvantage us. And I think we will get a lot farther. But I think another problem too is, is that it's very hard to look at oneself and, and see our flaws and, and be able to admit to them, right? Like, cause we immediately go to, oh no, not I. And I think it's going back to what Kalia has been saying for a very long time, this idea that if I am a color racist, 
therefore I'm a bad person and I can't be a bad person. So therefore I am not a color racist. And here are all my dark skinned friends <laughs> to prove why I'm not a color racist. Right. Um, right. So yeah, I think if, if you could, if you could um, be, uh, if you could understand intersectionality, if you can understand your privileges as it relates to those things and then understand that none of these things necessarily mean you are a bad person. They're just things that you have to work on. And I think we can actually get somewhere. But yeah, that's always, it's always that. It's always, no, not me. No, I'm, I'm Mrs. Iglesias, not, not, not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I guess the first thing we should do is name the fact that like there is an advantage systemically and socially to being a light-skinned person of color. Right? Yes, and, um, and all the different groups that, that are included in person of color too, right? Yeah, all of them. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think that's like the, the elephant in the room, like light skin advantage. I actually don't use the word privilege. Even when I'm talking about white people, I don't use privilege um, because there will be poor white folks who say, well, I grew up poor and rough. I didn't have any privileges. But when you say advantage, it's easier to say that, yeah, I might've had things hard, but they were not as hard because I had an advantage. So going to your point mm -hmm. about people taking it personally, I'm going to call it light skin advantage because just because you're a light skinned black person in this situation doesn't mean that you face like discrimination based off of your blackness, but it does mean that there's mm -hmm. a possibility that you have um, been able to avoid even worse situations because your skin was lighter than someone else's. And I know that, you know, data mm -hmm. backs that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And see, I commend you for that because we've had this conversation before. I'm going to say privilege because I said what the, I said what I said. And I understand that things might get lost in translation. I'm like, I got time to sugarcoat shit for you. I am coming mm -hmm. at your throat because it's been years and years and years of this going on. And that's just, and I've only been here for, you know, 20 something and I'm already tired. So I commend you for that. And I think that that definitely is uh, the better way to go because I think you know the whole point is to make sure that people hear you right because if I come at your own privilege and you're no longer hearing me then it is a waste of of time and space but I'm just not there yet I'd be like I said what I said right but I mean, honestly it. it's fair for you to be fed up right because you've had <laughs> to bear the brunt of it so like yeah. I'm not gonna correct a dark skin girl who says oh that's light skin privilege I'm not gonna say oh you should say advantage because like you said you said what you said you yeah. have to deal with the impact so I'm gonna hold the L however I feel about it. But we know people are sensitive. They take yes. things personally. So this is this is to bring the people in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's smart. I think it's brilliant to do it that way. Um woo child. So uh do we do we continue to dive into this this uh I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, do we wanna skip to the I'm sorry? I think we're there. We've already gotten to you know the end of the house. She's she's not acknowledging these things. Um well, I have uh, notes. Mm -hmm. notes. Okay. Um, so I will uh, preface the people by saying that, um, oh, if somebody has her uh, tweets pulled up, they can read them so we don't misquote the good sis. She said it bad enough on her own. We don't need to do that. But when she was first given a backlash for putting out this raggedy, raggedy tone deaf song, she's, she's, came at the black women who she as of yesterday claims to be um came at the black woman saying that they are too sensitive god damn y'all always want to pick on me y'all always find something to hate on y'all are some haters bitch all we said is that you're a colorist that makes us a hater because we want to help you not be that um so her first response was to get on twitter and say y'all just basically are jealous of me you're haters and god loves me not you nana nana boo boo that's what she concluded her tweets with and then uh then we all wake up to a video where she has uh black fished her ass off with her box braids and this new accent i've never heard and proceeds to tell us how she's sorry but she ain't so if anybody wants to read or transcribe that wonderful apology you can go ahead and start. Hi guys, it's Danny Lay, and I just wanted to address what's going on with me right now. Um, I think it's super important because I definitely feel super misunderstood and, you know, my song, Yellow Bone is what he won't. Um, I think people twist it into thinking like, I'm trying to bash another woman, another skin tone. Like, that was never my intention. I wasn't brought up like that. I never looked at my skin as a privilege. I never looked at me as I'm better than somebody because of my skin tone. Nah, like 
I see brown skinned women flaunt their skin all the time in music. Like, why can't I talk about mine? If you look at me, I'm light skin, I'm a yellow bone. In my opinion, that's just what I am. So it's like, it wasn't something that I looked at so deeply, which I can see why people will take it deeply. So I understand and I'm sorry that I wasn't sensitive to the topic when I wrote my comment, like, why are you guys taking it so personal? Because it can be a personal thing to certain people because colorism is a real thing. So I do get it, but I'm not that. <laughs> I'm not a colorist. I'm not a racist. I date a whole chocolate man. I have beautiful dark skinned friends. Like, and skin isn't something I even see. Like, it's not something that I look at. Like, you know, so yeah, I don't live for the internet. I just, because people don't know me. So that's why I thought it was important to speak on it because because you don't know me, it's like, let me tell you guys what I meant by this. So hopefully you guys can watch this with a open heart, a genuine mind, and just, you know, try to get past it. I'm sorry. Again, if I offended people who are truly offended, I'm sorry. And yeah, I'm gonna just keep grinding, keep doing me, keep posting me, and, see. and yeah. I hope everybody has a great Sunday. And yeah, it's all love. Um, I just want to acknowledge again, like I think, and this, you know, I love to give, I, this is my uh, how to say you're sorry uh, instructional mm -hmm. video. Um, mm -hmm. Take a moment to breathe when you get some backlash or some shit. And don't get me wrong, you're not going to be able to please everybody, right? Sometimes it really is just on some, all right, well, damn. But in this particular case, I think it would have been good for her to just say, well, let me sit back and understand what's happened here. Because to go again, to go straight to, no, 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 y'all always coming at me. I'm always doing something wrong. Da, 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 da. It's like, nah, sis, that's not it. We really, you have done something wrong in this particular case. And I think if you took some time to look at it and to be, have some self-introspection, I think if you can be self-introspective about these things and open-minded about those things. And again, acknowledge what Kalia has been saying for a long time. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's just, you've done this quote unquote bad thing or this harmful thing then we can get somewhere. But if you're going to have those defenses up and those walls up, we're not going to get anywhere. You're, you're going to continue to perpetuate these things that you've been perpetuating. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I do have my, my first thing that I wrote down, but I don't know if Kalia wanted to add to that first before. No, go ahead. Okay. So my first problem with her apology was she said, I have uh, never looked at my skin as a privilege. And I said, everyone well, take a shot. <laughs> and I said well this is telling because if you have it that's why you was able to make this song and did not see nothing wrong with it um and I um uh, I'm trying to figure out what else I wrote down oh yeah and it's just this idea again that it is her responsibility to do something about this as the privileged person so that was what I wrote down and I know we've already talked about that before but just that was my first issue was just this whole I've never looked at my skin as a privilege Right. And we can tell. <laughs> yeah, we know that. The, white people literally say the same thing, girl. We know. We know that you don't think you have privilege. That is literally what the whites say. I don't yeah. have privilege. I grew up poor. Like, I don't have privilege. I had to work really hard. I had to go to school. <laughs> I had to go to the job interview after I played golf with the owner, you know? I still had to go to the interview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, it's very telling, again, talking specifically to light-skinned people, the fact that we could even think to ourselves, what's the big, like, I don't understand the problem. Like, I had several people message me who were like, okay, like, help me understand. I'm not seeing exactly mm -hmm. what was wrong with the song. Not the apology, but what was wrong with the song. And so mm -hmm. it's very telling, like, that we do have a privilege and it's a privilege because we don't see it. We don't have to think about the fact that as a light-skinned mm -hmm. Black person, we have been given certain messages our entire lives. And we don't yes. necessarily think about the fact that dark-skinned people have been given a very different message. Uh, one that yeah. says that they're inferior, that they're not good enough, that they belong outside, that they're more promiscuous, they're more violent. Like all of these messages are attributed to darker-skinned people. Yes. And we, because it was not directed at us, we don't even realize that it's been directed at someone else. So I think yeah. I was like her saying, I never have even seen this. I didn't know I had this. I don't have this privilege is exactly what white people say. And we <laughs> read them for filth. So like yeah. people, if you are, if you said to yourself, I don't have this privilege, I've never benefited because I'm light skin. That's a lie. That is part of the privilege. And it's okay. You just gotta yeah. sit with it. You just gotta sit with it. And you have to be willing to give up that privilege, right? Like I think there are a lot of people who have said again these same things about white people is that they don't want to dismantle the system that privileges them. 
And I think that that's the same thing in this particular case, going back to intersectionality, as we speak specifically about light skin privilege versus dark skin disadvantage, right. you have to be willing to give up that privilege. That was one of the things that I was trying to say with the, uh, the models that I chose for the Do Not Bleach merch that I put out was this idea that with, with the power that I have, I want to make room at the table for people who have not had room at the table before. So. Mm -hmm. And Sydney, I would even say that it's not even necessarily giving up the privilege, right? Like one mm -hmm. of my mentors, uh, who's an older white lady, she talks about the fact that she loves what being white has afforded her. Safety, benefit of the doubt, like positive role models and influences in media. She says, I don't want to give those things up because they're good things. I mm -hmm. want to work to make sure that everyone has access yes. to those things. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, because, yeah. you know, I couldn't give up my, my advantage even if I wanted to, but I can mm -hmm. get on here and drag light skinned people for filth every time this happens because I mm -hmm. want everyone to grow up in a world where people who look like them are being shown the positive aspects of who they are. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's definitely a better way to word that for sure. It was a way I hadn't looked at it before. And, it's, and I even think saying it that way, going back to how you said saying advantage over privilege, I think saying it that way will make it an easier task and maybe not so seemingly insurmountable, right? Right. right. Um, okay, oh, next I... line of the apology. So you want me to go next, Kalia? You want to go next for your next line? Okay. We might have the same line. Because that was actually the first thing that I wrote down. Well, okay. I'm, yeah, that was the first thing I wanted to touch on that I wrote down. Okay. Um, so the next thing that pissed me off <laughs> she said i see brown skin girls flaunt their skin color yep. all yep. the time why can't i she said yes. that that's what i had also that's we're, we're here we're here today <laughs> and so again it goes back to one we're talking about music the hip-hop industry yeah, and she has the nerve to say, "Why can't I fla flaunt my light skinnedness?" However, her her very first defense of her song was, "Why can't I show my light skin baddies some love? <laughs> like, why can't I celebrate light skin baddies?" First of all, girl, redundant. Um, <laughs> I have never been told, "Don't play outside; you're gonna get too dark." I've literally been told, "Aisha tan so quickly." Aisha tan so you know like oh, she gets, you know, so pretty or her skin, you know, she gets to tan so quickly. She doesn't lay outside and burn and whoop de whoop. Like I've never been told don't play outside. I've literally been encouraged to play outside. So literally starting at a very basic thing that we start like in childhood with, I've never even had to consider not going outside. I was literally always outside. And that's like starting at the very first thing that I can like think of as childhood to be like, damn, I would have never even thought like, check myself, damn, like, don't tell other people don't go play outside you're gonna get too dark like what kind of message is that you know and for somebody to say like I I don't think about my skin color um why do brown skin girls get to celebrate themselves how dare Beyonce celebrate these dark girls and I can't shout out the light skin girls like didn't Lil Wayne tell us like years ago she's a beautiful dark skin girl but she'd be better as a red bone like right. yikes girl they get right. plenty celebrated we get plenty celebrated like like, like we are the, the standard essentially but it's interesting Aisha because I remember growing up and like I remember I shared that picture on Instagram like a week ago of like what I look like as a child because I played outside so much so I actually was told you like you're getting too dark you know this was by extended family not anyone in my immediate household but like I would have family members say come inside you're too dark you you've been outside too long because mm -hmm. you're supposed to be the pretty one, the yellow one. Now you're starting mm -hmm. to look brown. So mm -hmm. even then, I, I can remember having those explicit things said to me by people. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to like the industry standards, we know that light skin, thick, long hair, red bone, like we have heard the term red bone since we were in elementary school, knowing mm -hmm. that it meant light skin. Um, so I don't right. know why we're trying to act like light skin girls haven't gotten their shine. They've been the mm -hmm. only ones celebrated up until recently, I feel like it's just now becoming popular to say, oh, dark skin is beautiful. Yeah. Like, it's I like the trend. It's like the trend. Even the white boys who date Black girls are, it's trendy to be like, they want a dark skin girl or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. but it's, again, it's trendy. It's, it's giving TikTok. It's not giving 
it's, it's just like the same thing as celebrating natural hair, right? Like, how long has it really truly been okay to celebrate your natural hair? Like, right. I and literally was told, like, don't go natural because people are going to wonder when you're in the club why you have a, such a nice outfit on, but why the fuck you ain't spend no money getting your hair done? Like, yeah. like these things are just yeah. now being celebrated as of yesterday. So, and still only certain groups too, and certain hair textures also. Like, I, there are certain people who have had their hair texture celebrated for very, like myself, I was never told. I remember, I think I was told one time I had nappy hair, but I had been told my entire life that I had good hair. So when the girl said it, I was like, oh girl, I got good hair. Like you tried it with that one. You might want to try me on some being short or being skinny or something like that. You have a better chance of coming for me. But my, even the idea that my self-confidence could be built on something that was tearing other people down around me, right? Like you have good hair. Oh yeah. So then that means this about me, even though that same comment could, could be an assault on somebody else. Right. But going back to the points that you made, um, I lost my train of thought. Why does this happen to me? <laughs> Why? Well, you're figuring it out. Cause I, I know Charlamagne compared brown skin girls to this song and said that Brown skin girls was celebrating, you know, all the complexion. So why can't her song, like her song, she said is celebrating yellow tone girls. But we have to, again, call a spade a spade. Her song did not gen like generally celebrate light skin girls. It was a song about comparison. Like yellow. She literally is what said he yellow wants. bone is what he wants. Yeah. Which going back she to the literally point, said he wants a lit bitch, so he had to switch switch. And what did you mean by switch switch? Because when people are like, oh, she's uh shading um the baby's baby mama, Mimi. Um, he got a lit bitch, so he wanted to switch switch. So you mean he wanted to switch from his brown skin woman to this light skin to this yellow woman. Um, and now he's officially lit or he has a lit bitch officially because he's right. left the brown woman. Like, yeah, and going, how is that, how was that celebrating even light skin baddies? You're not even celebrating light skin baddies. You're celebrating yourself. Yeah. It was about her. Mm -hmm. And going back to, you know, this whole, this whole switch, switch thing too. And going back to representation, what Kalia was saying earlier about like not needing a song about, you know, yellow bones is when you look at even our own stories, right? When you look at maybe your mo your favorite black love story, your favorite black film, I I was looking at them. Love don't cost a thing. Best man, love and basketball. The woman is lighter than the man, mm -hmm. in every single one of those stories. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel like I'm. I think there's been one time that I can remember light skinned women saying they didn't feel represented. And it was Black Panther, and of course that was one of those. Read the room, bitch. <laughs> This is it's for us. This one time, the fact that you are this one time feeling this way, mm -hmm. and again, we're and talking about uh, skin complexion specifically. I'm talking about body type, and I'm talking about these other things that create intersectionality. Just this one thing. That is the whole point. Like, and again, like you were saying, comparing it to brown skin girls, like these songs are felt to be needed because these industries, media, be it visual, be it audio, be it whatever, they they are always constantly talking about and uplifting light-skinned women, right? You look at your favorite rapper, what do the girls look like in his videos? Who is the leading lady in his videos? You look at your favorite movie, who is, is the woman lighter than the man, like I just said earlier? Listen to the actual lyrics. So many of these rappers, like YG, for instance, I feel like he was out here doing the protest things, and then at the same time, somebody's like, oh yeah, YG got colorist lyrics, and I'm just like, every time, it's always that And one also, <laughs> brought out his colorism at freaking Nipsey Hussle's funeral. <laughs> yeah and it's just so like, ah, our beautiful light-skinned daughters and light-skinned yeah. children and light-skinned with ah girl i don't think he would have said anything like this ah <laughs> yeah exactly. Got a smile. and it's, it's one of those things it's like even at a funeral you cannot forget that you're dark skin somebody has to remind you of your dark skinness and how right. you are less than even at a funeral so right and it's kind of right. like she pulled the whole um all lives matter like she yeah. was like, well, what about us light skins? We don't have a song. Like again, the same thing we say to white people. You don't get to say all lives matter because black lives are the ones that are in question, the ones that are mistreated. Dark skinned mm -hmm. women are the ones who are disrespected the most. Like people love the Malcolm X quote about black women being the least protected and respected. But within that quote, we know for a fact that dark skinned black women are the most disrespected in the spectrum of blackness so yeah. we have to be able to call that space to say and just let people have their moment like black panther was that moment i feel like insecure was also that moment 
you know, and that's okay. Life can, we don't have to always be seen. I'm tired of seeing us, honestly. It's, too- it's like the, it's like just the fight over, oh, you suffer, you face discrimination, but me too, but me too. And, and, and maybe even worse than you, it's like, you don't, you don't, you don't got to do that. Like we know as black women, we are disrespected. We know as black women, we face racism. We know as black women, we, it's the intersectionality of being a woman also. Like we already know all those things. Oh. Like, but when a dark skinned person or um, a person in the community that you're not a part of tries to tell you about their struggle, and you try to be like, yeah, but me too. Yeah, but I also this. And it's like, girl, why you can't just listen to somebody having a struggle? Because that's the same thing as trying to say, hey, it's really hard for me to get a job. A white person be like, yeah, well, me too. It's hard for me to get a job too. Sometimes I'm not gonna have to put my name on my resume. So, <laughs> you know, it's hard for us all. Right. And let me just throw in, because I've seen the comment before where light skinned people say, well, no, I didn't have privilege because growing up, I was made fun of for being light-skinned. The girls used to pick on me and, and, and bully me and all those things. Mm-hmm. That is not the same. You still mm-hmm. have to see yourself represented in all mm-hmm. facets of life. You still have better life expectancy than a dark-skinned person. You still have a chance of getting a lesser sentence just based off the color of your skin. You still have a better chance of getting a, a job over someone who's dark skin. Better paying job too. Yeah. So it's like, it's not discounting the fact that, yeah, you might have got bullied because you were light skinned by dark skinned people, but also understanding that came from a place of hurt. Oftentimes it was projection because that dark skinned person was told that you are better than them just off the strength of skin color not just right. playing why you were bullied because no one should be bullied, but we have to understand where that came from. And it normally was from a place of hurt and someone being taught from an early age that they are not good enough off the strength of their skin color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Right, and as far as um, light skin or biracial or whatever the experience of I was bullied too because of my skin tone, it's like, girl, y- you were picked on for being beautiful, like, and that was a, your struggle. Yeah. and. And maybe not even necessarily beautiful, but you got picked on because your your skin tone was more favorable, quote unquote, by certain races or even within dark skin people as well. But you're not getting a longer sentence. Like you're not understanding like the gravity of of you know what's what the intensity is. Like, okay, you got bullied, you got told you're too pretty, you're too white. Mm-hmm. But this person literally will be in prison for 20 years compared to your five. Right. Based sure. on your skin tone and how the how the public will perceive you and your skin color and how how dark it is so therefore how much of a threat it is to society but okay going back to her apology what's next party people um Kalia had my exact next thing um oh the the next thing I had written down was um the cardinal mistake what I believe to be the cardinal mistake and that's (sighs) giving up your dark-skinned boyfriend (laughs) and your black friends and before I get into it I would just like to say I don't know where the baby is right now. Hi, I don't know where the baby's baby is right now. But let me tell you something. If I, and this is not me at all judging the mama, and I'm saying what I would do as a dark skinned woman. If I found out you had my child around a woman that would make a song called Yellow Bone, Yellow Bone, and then get on the internet and make that apology, the swiftness that I would come in and swoop up and get my child, <laughs> and the fact that she would not have her color racist ass around my dark skinned daughter and what the things she could be possibly teaching her inadvertently, you give me, don't play outside, girl, you'll get dark. And if I hear you say that to my child, I'm coming for you. But... Uh, and it's giving, we're riding in the car to drop her off at school. And you got my dark skin baby singing yellow bone is what he want. He needs a switch switch. Ah, yikes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but back to the subject matter at hand. Everybody goes there. Everybody. I was on a Zoom call where somebody said some really, really homophobic shit. And the first thing they said was, but my brother is gay. Donald Trump, if I'm not mistaken, when he was accused of uh, the discrimination at his ho- at his father's hotel or his hotels, I think that was what, or even even more recently when he's been accused of being a racist, it was, oh, but I have black friends or I have, I've hired black people, blah, 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 blah. I've blah. been in rap yeah. videos. That is always where people go. And I do not know why that is the first thing, but it is a tell all to me. Like, I'd be like, if I didn't think you was this before, I think it now. Because as soon as you bring up, I got black friends, I'm hitting you with them. Mm-hmm. yeah um i'm not a colorist i date a whole chocolate man um mm-hmm. i also have beautiful dark friends 
And I would like to know why you didn't consult your beautiful dark friends before you put out this tacky ass song. Oh, and wait. furthermore, why you didn't consult them when you decided to make your apology that was not an apology. Like, why didn't you ask all of your many plentiful dark skinned friends for some help in okay. your pin game? But why after immediately after saying I have beautiful dark skinned friends, she then says, Skin isn't even something I see. But I'm not that. <laughs> I'm not a colorist. I'm not a racist. I date a whole chocolate man. I have beautiful dark skin friends. Like, and skin isn't something I even see. Like, it's I see. Cool. I can't so, even see it. I can't even see skin, guys. But I do see that chocolate man and my dark skin friend. Other than that, I, I don't, don't see, see skin, skin. But yellow, 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 yellow. <laughs> Right. Yeah, now, that's a good point. I didn't even think about. Ooh, Bitch, child. if you're so colorblind, how you know what color you is? How? <laughs> right. She's color again. That's the other thing that people do too. Is is the the pulling and reaching for conveniences. Like it's oh, I don't see color until it helps me to get out of this situation because I got dark skin friends and a dark and the dark skin boyfriend particularly really don't help you at all for me because I'm like girl, that ain't got nothing to do with how you treat black or excuse me or dark skinned women nor the advantage you have in these areas over them right it has nothing to do with this dark skin man so don't even bring him up into this whole situation and you said your dark skin chocolate man like he was dr umar johnson or something like what is he <laughs> what are his lyrics about like what are you talking about you silly goose god damn <laughs> <laughs> yeah what a mess as soon as she said that i was like you can throw this whole apology away now throw the whole thing away because that is all i needed to know what you want to know actually what made me throw it away what it made? was literally her very first sentence of her apology yeah so i yeah. said that for the end the first thing she says is that was never my intention guys it's danny lay and I just wanted to address what's going on with me right now. Um, I think it's super important because I definitely feel super misunderstood. And, you know, my song, Yellow Bone is what he won't. Um, I think people twist it into thinking like, I'm trying to bash another woman, another skin tone. Like, that was never my intention. I oh, yeah. I know that intent does not negate, negate impact. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. The lesson again. If people intent does not negate impact, just because you meant for something to go one way, it does not change the fact that many people perceived it as something harmful. So mm -hmm. it does not matter if you meant it to be uplifting. People are telling you it is not. So at that point, you have to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to uh, take a step back, like you said, and listen to the folks who are saying this is harmful and try to understand why? Or are you going to double mm -hmm. down? Because the other thing she said at the very end is, I'm sorry again, if I offended people. I'm sorry again, if I offended people who are truly offended, I'm sorry. Yeah, and there's that, the ifs. It's always the ifs. It's, yeah. You don't want it to, it, to me, it, it, it sounds as if you don't want to take own ownership for the harm that you have caused it's still like well if i did it's like no i think i did and and i feel like that's that is at the root of so many bad apologies as, as aisha said earlier i've done the uh, apology breakdown on a many of episodes at this point and it is always on my list of kind of like when that there was a teacher if y'all are new to our podcast new to us there was a um a uh, I guess education somebody involved in education and he was saying if I offended y'all when I said what do you say per people of color color people or something like that he's like oh if I offended y'all mm -hmm. well we know you did which is why you're here so why keep saying mm -hmm. it and I think it again goes back to it's because you don't want to take responsibility for this harm but you have to we all do harm in one way or another right. it's going to happen you just I don't think you're going to make it through this entire life without harming or hurting somebody it's okay to just say I did and I'm sorry Mm -hmm. why that's so hard i don't know i guess we learned to apologize the same place we learned how to ignore color right and again it goes back to the, the idea that if i admit that i did this thing if if danny admitted that what she made was a colorist song all obviously being a colorist is bad and since we don't have the mental capacity to separate the actions from people mm -hmm. uh, she said to herself well colorists are bad people and I'm not a bad person, which mm -hmm. is why she says, so y'all don't know me. I just made this video so y'all can know who I was because she's basically saying, people, I'm not a bad person. 
Mm-hmm. And so that I think that's where the defensiveness came from, because if you think that doing something bad makes you a bad person, no one's few people are going to say, yep, I'm a bad person because I did this thing. So they, they, you know, qualify, they give the disclaimers. So I, yeah. again, I feel like because we cannot sit with people being imperfect, we mm-hmm. get these terrible apologies because admitting that you did something bad, we feel like is attack on our overall character and it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And that was the part for me when she said, um, y'all don't know me. The people in my real life know me. I'm trying to help y'all because y'all don't know me. Like, y'all don't know how good of a person I am, how innocent I am, how much I did not intend to hurt you. People don't know me. So that's why I thought it was important to speak on it because because you don't know me. It's like, let me tell you guys what I meant by this. So hopefully you guys can watch this with a open heart a genuine mind and it's like well girl you didn't make the song to make money from your friends from your core group of dark skin friends and if your core group of dark skin friends didn't care that is y'all business but you didn't make a personal video for them and put it in your group chat you put it on the world wide web so you can make ducats from the very people that you literally said a few months ago, well, maybe a year ago at this point, I draw influence from Black culture. Mm-hmm. I make my music from Black culture and, and to basically make all my money from you Blacks. Not calling herself a Black girl at any point during that statement, but said basically, y- all y'all Black people, y'all influence me and I fuck with it and I will make money from y'all. Thanks a bunch. You want me to read so the again, tweet? you didn't make this for your group chat with your beautiful dark friends. You made it to make money from the people you're disrespecting. So to say, I'm sorry if I offended you, you people. It's like, well, girl, don't you want our ducats? So what do you mean if? What if I, what if, what if I don't give you no money for this song? What if I cancel your ass? Like, what are you talking about? Right. And I'm going to read the tweet since you brought it up. Cause this is from 6, 5, 2020. So last mm-hmm. year she mm-hmm. says, I'm Dominican and have grown up with the influence of amazing black friends, culture, and music. We stand Not family. For- Just want to yeah. say that. Yeah. It, the, you know, influence, meaning it's not me, but I was influenced by it. Uh, right. We stand in unity and in love. Stop separation and let's all fight together with our voices. Hashtag George Floyd, I say your name with a heart. Hashtag and- I'm Dominican, not Black. Right. So, you know, people. there has been a lot of criticism about, oh, she's not even Black. And I think we both talked about before we started recording how none of us want to like gatekeep Blackness. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, she's not Black. She shouldn't even be saying yellow bone because I did see people say that. But for just last year for her to say I'm Dominican who draws influence from black that to me sounds like she's saying I don't consider myself black but again I'm gonna leave that up to interpretation I don't care to me it it doesn't matter whether or not she's black because even if she's Dominican colorism is an issue there too it's a big issue Mm -hmm. in the Latinx community we know that there's Mm -hmm. a whole issue between Dominicans and Haitians and they're on the same landmass so even if she there is was, literally colorism within i mean every culture but indians and you don't hear them calling themselves black like right right so yeah. it, however you spin it her highlighting the fact that she is a lighter complexion is colorist it does not matter whether we're saying it's colorist because she's black or because she's dominican either way it's problematic like there, there's no way to get around that and she just has yeah. to hold the l and do better it's okay. Yeah, but I, again, it goes. I think it goes back to the layers involved in this whole situation because I mean, there is like you're, how you're pointing out that this idea that no matter whether you say you're black or you're not, there's still colorism in all these other communities, and then there's that. But I also think, and I understand you saying I'm not the gatekeeper, or nor do I want to be the gatekeeper of blackness, and maybe I do because I'm very much so on some. Oh no, no, no! Because if you don't look black, if you ain't catching these L's like these black folks out here, then girl, you don't get to use the N word. Okay, you don't get to. Yeah. Say you don't have a black home. experience. I'm sorry. Whatever. No. And so I, I think it for me, because I, I know people will because I know a lot of things that can say, well, the, the line is very arbitrary, but I think it is about saliency. I think it is about do people think you're black? You better get your ass because you're black. It's like Malcolm X said, you don't catch hell because you're a Muslim. You don't catch hell because you're a Christian. You catch hell because you're a black man or a black woman in this particular case or a dark skinned woman in this very particular case. But it's like, yeah, um, I guess I'll be the gatekeeper of blackness and say, yeah, if you on the internet talking about how you're not black, but then now you want to play black because you're trying to not catch as much of the L. I don't, I guess for me, I don't like uh, the escapism of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's like, cause we, we, and we could talk about Rachel Dozel, but like, for instance, we were having a conversation about her in one of my classes. And I was saying that, I guess I wasn't as offended because she wasn't taking 
blackness on and off. I would be more offended by what she is, Danny is doing over what Rachel Dozel does because she literally navigated through this world as a black woman, as opposed to Danny who's saying, well, I'm black now. Yeah. I.e. Mm-hmm. or Cardi B apparently who also does the same thing. Well, I'm black now because now I don't want to catch this L. But it's like, no, 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 girl. Because I mean, if we're going to wear t-shirts that say they want our culture, but not us, we can't then pick and choose who gets to play black when they want to. Because you're doing yeah. the same thing. Because and even in her defense or her claim of who she is or what she is or identifies as, she says, oh, like, oh my God, guys, I'm Spanish, dot, dot, dot. I'm black, I'm white, I'm, I'm everything, mm. the end. She and said, the thing is, being Africa, Spanish, <laughs> being Spanish doesn't make you automatically black and white. That's, that's not what that is, girl. Um, I don't know why you thought saying, but I'm Spanish. <laughs> I can say yellow. I can say that color. Like, girl, that doesn't make you black because you're Spanish. Um, Spain, yeah. hello. And I think but a lot of people do that though. Yeah, because we don't. We're even as black people, we don't understand or take the time to really uh, research the difference between racial identity, your ethnicity, your nationality. Like, all of those things are very distinct. Uh, so, you know, let's say, let's just say she decided she was black, right? She is still going to get far more advantages because she can pass for white. So yeah. even if you were to put on, if she decides, you know, I'm going to be a black girl and take everything that comes with it. Again, going back to intersectionality, her experience is going to be very different from yours, Sydney. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, even me and Aisha will have different experiences from each other and then me and you Sydney will have different experiences like there are layers the closer you are to white the the more advantages you have so Mm -hmm. even if she's black it does not matter like her her stance she's wrong it's problematic like she's just wrong yeah Mm -hmm. I agree well it is unfortunate that she doesn't have one of her beautiful dark skin friends isn't Sydney and um <laughs> not that it would be her job but could teach her a good apology when she uh needs one every now and then yeah and, and I, I can't remember awesome. if I said this already um as far as the recording I can't remember if I said it beforehand but my mood is very much so just don't apologize until you do some research girl I Danny if you see this somebody sends this to you please read how to be anti-racist by Dr. Ibram Kendi sit with it then come back to us and let us know what you thought. Let us know how you will proceed forward. Because I think- Come you on, just not just giving a dragon, giving a book. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, because at the end of the day, none of it's going to get us anywhere if it's just, oh, I came here to drag you for bills, read you for bills. It is, uh, nah, you got to, we got to learn. We got to take something from this. I think a lot of times, like, I, know, I can remember a lot of situations where celebrities have come under heat for different things. Like when Kevin Hart threw that cowboy and Indians party for his son, and people were like, this is not okay. And he was like, oh, we used yeah. to do it when we were kids. It's like, girl, did nobody care about what y'all did. That doesn't make it okay. Stupid. Right, exactly. It's like, we are here now. And mind you, I think a lot of the times, going back to what some, I, one of y'all said earlier, this this saying that, oh, y'all are sensitive. I think number one, when you look through you know, the history of our people, you will find a reason why whatever sensitivity they are having is there, right? It's there and there's a historical or, or even a contemporary example of why they feel this way. But I also think again, going back to, oh, we've done this before. Like, okay, but you know, we're trying to do something better. And I think there's a question of when we have these jokes and you hear like um, Bernie, Bernie Mac doing a joke about gay things or, or whatever, it's like, I wonder how the people who are always the butt of the joke, I wonder how the people who are, are disadvantaged, you know what I'm I wonder how they are, their outcomes in life, if we continue to allow them to be the butt of the joke, if we continue to just say, oh, well, we've done it all this time. Mm-hmm. We continue to not do any research to not try to change ourselves where we're going to be because I, I think at the end of the day the, the point of these conversations is to make sure that our our kids our friends kids whoever don't have to keep on having the same conversation um right. and the last thing I did want to say too was that uh the grand dame queen on IG made a very good point um to which what I got out of it was this idea that um and going back to this idea of songs is that there has to be something more than just oh we got brown skin girls it's like no we need and, and clear about this point earlier I think what we need is that the people who are in privilege to do something with their power and their voice and their their platforms to dismantle it. Like it's cute to say, oh, brown skin girl, you're beautiful, right? Okay, cool. But we're gonna be doing that for a very long time if we don't dismantle the systems that mm-hmm. disadvantage dark people. So yeah. uh, yes, Danny girl, with your privilege, cause you're already in there. Cause I mean, I think it's a very tough pill to swallow. It's not to say she's not talented, but to know that part of the reason why you might be where you are is something as simple as your skin complexion. Right. Um, but with that, you can do something to make the world a better place as opposed to making shitty, sorry girl, I gotta say it, 
the song was terrible. Yellow bonus, what do you want? What do you want? Not just because it was about yellow bone, like it literally and and, and it sonically sounded bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, just do something. We can do so much better with your art. You know what I'm saying? Um, or yeah, and don't tell people that they're sensitive haters if you want their sensitive hater dollars because that's your uh, target demographic. So yeah, and mood is, and if you ain't gonna help the problem, just be quiet. That's all. That's mm-hmm. the only other thing. Right. So, yeah. so the one thing I'll add in terms of like a resource, I follow this woman named. Her IG name is Black Puerto Rican PhD. So I've seen her like anytime there's uh, an issue with like someone who's Latina or Latino talking reckless, you know, about the Black community or, or separating themselves. She's always someone who I see call in people. Um, she highlights the fact that she is both Black and Puerto Rican and talks about the anti-Blackness within the Latinx community. So she, mm-hmm. I think, is a really good resource for uh, people specifically who have the Latinx um, background to be able to better understand why some of the th- these issues are complex, especially if you not are, aren't previously aware of it. Um, so that's, that's an account that I follow, but there are a lot of people in the Latinx community who are doing this like decolonization work around anti-Blackness in the community because all of that is still upholding white supremacy, right? Like, Mm -hmm. And I think we have to name that the fact that she would make a song saying that yellow is what he wants. Yes, it's just a song. It's a terrible song that, you know, people are not going to listen to. It's still really harmful because it's continuing to reinforce something that has institutional consequences for people who, like you said, are at the the bearing the brunt of the impact of this song. Uh, So Mm -hmm. to me, I actually take it very seriously just because I know that it's just one more stone thrown at people who have already been stoned to death. Like it, we don't, we mm-hmm. don't do that. So in short, yeah. like the people, we gotta cut it out. Just stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Is that everything? Has everybody gotten in? Are, are all go, get my- your, go get your resources, party people. <laughs> everybody honestly everybody could benefit from reading that book it will call you out okay it will call you a racist in one way yeah no it it called me out it slapped me quite a few times <laughs> yeah so I, we recommended we up we uplifted on this good here podcast um are all minds clear to quote uh, an old 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 friend of ours an old friend of ours yeah i'll yeah. say if, if anyone sees this and has questions especially light-skinned folks don't ask sydney she does not need to help you unpack your light skin <laughs> Um, you know, message me. We can talk about it. I'm not going to drag you for filth. You can ask. When people ask me questions, I'm always very polite. Um, but yeah, don't ask, don't ask your dark skin friends to explain this concept to you. Come talk to someone who understands that is light skin. That's our labor, not your dark skin friends. Leave them be. If you feel compelled, cash up them $10 just for their, their pain and suffering. Like <laughs> cash <laughs> up everybody's $10 for having to listen to that song. <laughs> right. She just she- <laughs> To, to drop a drop a link and we can just click and get ten dollars. I'm actually about to um comment my cash app on her Instagram. Yeah, I'm about to say you should pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you send her a PayPal request. Then she's the queen of sending somebody a PayPal request for her pain or something. <laughs> okay. Woo. Oh my god. That's right. Okay. Is everybody good? Are we? Is everybody all minds clear? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Kalia, for always making sure people know that it is not my responsibility to do the things. Um, thank y'all for joining us. Uh, we are happy to have made this emergency slash bonus episode on colorism <laughs> and, and Danny for y'all. We literally had to hop on real quick because the people were in the DMs and we were with, and we're always thankful to have y'all in the DMs and whatnot. Um, Kalia will be back. She's about to become a world traveler mm-hmm. she clearly is our one and only guest we love having her thank you for being here with us mm-hmm. um i have been sid the great and i'm very thankful to have been here and share this time with y'all thank y'all for tuning in kalia and i am aisha damali uh go grab yourself a book and get the hell out of our living room peace Yellow bonus, what do you want? What do you want? Yellow bonus, what do you want? What do you want?